Welcome to this week's episode of the Real World Podcast. I'm Alex Robertson, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about the six key elements to build wealth in your 20s. Now, this is an area that I think quite a lot about. I've got young children, I know they're going to be growing up in a very different world, uh, and I think it's essentially important that people learn as young as possible the key fundamentals building well so we're going to talk about the six key elements i'm going to share about my experiences and the mistakes that i've made uh along the way um yeah and this is a solo podcast obviously just me this week so um let's get straight into it now um <clears throat> in my 20s i made some mistakes uh, i made a series of fairly big mistakes which are somewhat inevitable for for most unless you find a different path unless you're able to escape from the status quo so you know i went through school uh, and when it became time to make that that next step i was driven by what i'd learned at school and and my experiences in the world around me and, and the views of my parents in terms of what the best way forward was in life uh, and for me it was always you know if you want to do well if you want to succeed in life here are a list of the jobs that are going to give you that success there was never any thought about entrepreneurship or wealth or any understanding of, of, of how finances work it was just get a good job go to university <clears throat> get a good job and you know I, whilst I was quite capable at school you know it was kind of lazy you know I, I'd done the bare minimum and usually got a B even if I wasn't putting much effort into it whereas you know if I applied myself I could have been an issue but so it wasn't that interested in most of the subjects that I was doing. So I got good enough grades to, to, to get into accountancy, which for me was one of those top five in terms of earning potential uh, as, as, as you go forward. Um, you know, obviously there were doctors, lawyers, those were the sort of things that were being talked about at the time. Uh, and, you know, my grades just weren't quite good enough to become a lawyer or a doctor. So I settled for accountancy, done four years at university, uh, and, in accounting finance incredibly through that process even though I was learning to understand how finances work and how a balance sheet is and how to prepare a P&L and how you manage the accounts of a business what I didn't learn through that process was the fundamentals of financial literacy and how to build wealth for yourself over a period of, of your life so it's very strange that even as a kid in finance, uh, you know, um, master, uh, I didn't, I, I didn't get any of that key knowledge uh, that that I needed. So, fast forward after university, I qualify with a, a decent degree, uh, and it's time to get a job. I was fortunate enough to get into um, an oil and gas company and got a, a junior finance role. A training chart accountancy with within a, an oil and gas company, so it was very much management accounts. And over the course of my twenties, the next ten years, I worked for that same company. Uh, I managed to climb my way up the ladder from finance manager to um, regional finance manager uh, to then become financial controller for the the Western Hemisphere operations of that company. Uh, when when I finally finished with them and went full time in my business. You know, I was I was in a senior finance role in Texas, uh, and I had earned a huge amount of money, uh, way more than than the average person would in their twenties. But I made some fundamental mistakes along the way. It wasn't until my early thirties I found books like Rich Dad Poor Dad that really propelled my understanding of, of how to create wealth. Uh, through my twenties, uh, I was traveling a lot in in this job. I um, was in Russia for uh, around about four years. I lived in Moscow for three of those. I was in Azerbaijan for about five years. I spent about six months in Tunisia. I spent about six months in Spain. I spent a year in Norway. So I was pretty much out of the UK for the entire period from about 21 into my early 30s. And that gave me an immense opportunity because you know I was I was young I was free I didn't have kids I didn't have obligations and I was working abroad where the company covered all of my costs they covered my accommodation they covered my cleaner they covered my driver you know everything I was able to live a very nice life 
and not have to put my hand in my pocket. Not only that, I got a really good salary and, and usually when you work for these types of companies, there's all sorts of benefits and bonuses in terms of your abroad, so you get certain provisions, there's tax efficiencies because you're not a UK tax resident. You know, I had I made a lot of money in my twenties, but I didn't understand uh, the fundamentals. And and one of the big mistakes I made is I always had a house back in the UK. You know, it was always for me about sure how well I was doing, even though I wasn't physically there most of the time. I only spent maybe a weekend every three weeks in the UK. I had a house, I had a brand new Mercedes convertible. You know, it was all about look at me. I'm doing really well rather than actually looking at that money and trying to invest it for the long term and take a much longer term view of, of life. You know, we had this big four bedroom house and, uh, and it was at the time just me and my girlfriend and I wasn't there most of the time. So it's just really, really poor uh, financial management. Uh, and I've still done quite well in my 20s, purely because I earned so much money. But the, the situation I could be in now approaching 40 could be exponentially better if I'd had my fundamentals, right? So, you know, this is, this is an important subject to me. I want people to get that, that knowledge and understanding uh, to start building wealth for the 20s because, you know, you just need to look at some of the wealthiest people in the world, like Warren Buffett, who, you know, dedicates his wealth to good genes and the fact that he's lived so long and been investing for so long. You know, if you're investing from a very young age, it's not whether you're going to become a millionaire, it's an inevitability of when you just need to have the fundamentals right. So it is really important. You know, one of the things that, that Warren Buffett always says is, is do not save what is left after spending, instead spend what is left after saving. It's similar to Robert Kiyosaki talks about pay yourself first. You know, those principles are pay yourself, pay your savings, pay your future self first before you spend money on liabilities or things that are wants and not needs. Uh, I learned to differentiate between the two. So there's a lot of really powerful uh, learnings out there. Um, but the young uh, generation now, and I'm thinking, you know, the guys that are in their early 20s just now and, and, and even younger uh, generations like my kids, they are going to be growing up into a, a very different world to a point where we don't even necessarily understand what that world is going to look like right now when we talk about artificial intelligence, we talk about the singularity, which is the point at which we cannot understand uh, how life is going to be based on the norms and principles that we have right now we can't extrapolate because it's going to be such a drastic, incredible shift in the way that the world works. And that could lead to mass displacement of work. So, you know, those old rationales of become a doctor, become a lawyer, become a, you know, uh, they may, they most likely do not apply to, to what comes next in terms of the um, transformation of, of human work over, over the next 10, 20, 30 years there is a huge risk that mass displacement of work leads to a lot of unemployed, it leads to the government stepping in and it leads to a lot of kind of broadening of universal credits uh, and people that are, are living a life on the breadline uh, with no discernible opportunities going forward. So, you know, for me now more than ever it is a time where young people need to learn these lessons, need to start taking this opportunity as it is now to build some serious wealth for the future and future-proof their financial well-being. Uh, you know, even going away from, from the massive impact that artificial intelligence can have, we've also got simple things like, like the hurdle to owning a home is becoming increasingly bigger. You know, I spoke about it on, on the podcast last week with uh, Rory Sutherland and so far as you know, in 1980, the average salary was six grand, the average property price was around about 24, it was, you know, a three times multiplier. Fast forward to 2024, your average salary was 34 grand and your average house price is 280 odd thousand. That's an eight times multiplier. That, if continues, could mean that home ownership becomes completely out of reach 
for most people going forward. You have to think that that's going to lead to some drastic reshape of of how we uh, live our lives. However, if the hurdles becoming bigger, ultimately what it means is we need to become more financially literate. We need to be creating our wealth uh, as early as possible. And, and in fact, you need to control what you can control. You know, as an individual, you can't necessarily control the property prices are going to continue to increase and the multipliers and gap between salary and property prices is going to get bigger. You don't have control of that. You have control of your own world. So you need to focus uh, on that. So broadly, uh, trying to set the scene of how important this stuff is. So let's get into these C six key elements of building wealth in your 20s and the things that you really need to focus in on as a young adult uh, in, in, a, in order to be able to build significant wealth as you go into your 30s, 40s and then on to retirement. So I've already mentioned it, but the, the first key element is setting the foundations. The foundations being your financial literacy, your understanding of how finance work. And that can be as simple as understanding budgeting. But, you know, understand budgeting, understand how pensions work, understand how tax works. Even if it's not in detail, at least at a high level, understand the principles of taxes. Understand how debt and mortgages work. The difference between a liability and an asset. Uh, these are some of the key concepts in, in financial literacy and it's important from a very early age to start educating yourself. The school system will not educate you on this stuff. It's not in the curriculum. It's not in their interests to have a, an economy full of well, well-educated, financially literate people because that's not what drives the economy. What drives the economy is people buying things that they don't need and can't afford. So um, you have to get that education for yourself. There's so many good books out there uh, to do that, uh, you know, I've already mentioned Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, Rich Smug Babylon, one of my favourites, it's a tidyless classic, uh, I even did a podcast on that, so if you want to go back and, and check it out, I give you an overview of of that, it teaches the most fundamental understanding of uh, financial literacy, which is, you, you need to learn to save uh, and only at the point where you can start to save and create some wealth, and that will hurt more when you're younger, you know, when your income is less, being able to put a portion of that away will hurt more than it does as you get older. But the power of compounding, and that's one of the other big important elements of financial literacy that needs to be understood, means that you're going to get way more bang for your buck on on amounts that you save on the front end when you're young versus those amounts that you, you spend much later on. And, and a good example of that, so if you are in a position of be it in my heart, you've just started to earn money, you, you're, you're maybe still living at home, you haven't bought a car, you haven't started racking up the liabilities comes and for the first time you've got a serious income and, and you're trying to figure out what to do with it. If you were able to start putting £200 away into something like a Vanguard account or a Hargreaves Lansdowne account where you know you invest it in even something basic like the S&P 500 um, over the last 50 years that's averaged over 11% annual return so you put 200 quid uh, a month in even earning an average of 10% and continuing to top that by 200 quid every month 30 years down the line when you're 50 you're going to have £452,000 saved up into that account. That is the power of compounding. You know, the £200 might be a massive pain for you when your gross salary is only, you know, £1,500 and you're only receiving £1,200 net. To put £200 that way, you want to leave yourself with a 1000 That That's a lot of pain at the start. But fast forward 10 years, or maybe not even as long as that when your salary is doubled, uh, and you're coming away with two and a half, three grand a month net cash, uh, you know, that 200 pounds isn't going to seem like a huge amount of money and you're so used to it now because that money has become sacrosanct. It's money that is gone. You don't even have the option whether or not you say that it's just something that must happen. Um, 
you know, the Vanguard accounts are quite good for that because it will just take it out of your bank every month like it's a direct debit, like it's a cost going out. It's no longer your money. Uh, and, and most people that are successful investing in that way uh, literally don't do anything. You know, you, you put it in a solid uh, security, uh, you know, you put it in a, like a, a CD, an S&P 500 tracker fund, and forget about it. Forget the password, let it go. It will go up and down year to year, but the average uh, income is what counts, and, and the average is proven overall period of time. So, um, financial literacy really is uh, hugely important. So, read as much as you can. Um, there are so many great books, it is difficult to list, but a lot of the principles are the same. Learn how to budget, learn how to control your money, learn how to understand the costs that support things. You know, if, if you go in uh, to, to buy a car, understand that if you buy a brand new car, there's going to be a huge amount of depreciation lost on that asset very quickly. Even if you're financing it, the reality is you're still paying for a huge amount of depreciation on the front end. Whereas if you buy a car that's a bit older, they get hit. You know, uh, if you're not so tied to the vanity of that, of having a brand new car, then then you can save a lot of money um, in the depreciation curve. Those are just fundamental things that you, you will learn through education uh, and financial literacy. Um, you know, the other thing that I mentioned as part of financial literacy is, is budgeting, you know. You need to learn how to budget, refine it as you go. The, the important thing for me about budget, and I was always test and measure, so you put a budget together. Don't just run with it, assuming that's what the budget is every month. Go back and break and sell it. Look at it and say, said I was going to spend this much on food last month. How much did I actually spend? And test and measure and learn as you go. That's the only way to get better as you go forward. Uh, categorize your expending expenditure and understand the difference between needs and wants so the things that you'd like to have the things that you absolutely need and our necessities um uh, and, and you know rationalize things that, that are, are not necessities um <clears throat> budgeting is yeah is incredibly important there's, there's a lot you can do with it there are a lot of really good tools and apps out there now uh, apps like Expensify, Spendy, Pocket Guard, Mint. There are a variety of them, and there's new ones coming out every day. So if you need a hand with budget and you're not spreadsheet master, there's no excuse. There are apps out there that, that, that literally do the whole process for you. A lot of them all link to your bank account and categorize things automatically, so you can make spending budgeting easier. So that's the first uh, major thing. The one thing I want to add to that is there are a few major pitfalls of budgeting for people who are uh, just getting started. Um, the, the biggest one being that most of, most people uh, in the early 20s don't even have a budget. They'll just spend as and when they, they, they see fit until they've got the money. Uh, and then that's when you start the behavior of living paycheck to paycheck. Um, you need to understand your expenses as well. You need to understand that to buy a car, it's not just the cost of the car, it's the cost of the insurance, cost of the tax, cost of the maintenance. You know, you, re you have to realize that, uh, you know, monthly expenditure will increase and decrease depending on whether it's Christmas time coming up, whether you've got key family birthdays and you need to buy presents. You know, it's, it's not a standardized thing that, that is exactly the same every month. You will have months where you need to provide for extra expenditure and it's whether or not you put that money away every month or whether you um you you take the hit at the time that it comes so you can create different accounts for holidays for christmases for birthdays you know for any one-time expenditure that you're saving up for over the long term um, that is a good way to keep visibility and you can most banking apps you can rename the account if you want it to be christmas fund you know you can do that so uh, don't overlook small purchases as well. You know, a lot of people will just kind of lose that in, in their expenditure. Like if you're spending, you know, uh, three pounds on a coffee every day, that's going to rack up over the course of a month and a year. That needs to be rationalised. Um, emergency funds as well. You know, if you've got your own property, you need to think about well, if my boiler breaks or if my car breaks down, and then to go fix that, or you know, I've got any other sort of maintenance that has to be done on the assets that I have. We need to have an emergency fund. 
Uh, don't ignore debt management and paying down things like credit cards or student loans. Uh, and, you know, ultimately the important thing is to be realistic. If you set an unrealistic budget uh, and saving just comes at the end of the month when you see what you've got left, you've got to find that you've got nothing left on a regular basis. And again, you're back to living paycheck by paycheck. So those are some of the key things in terms of setting the fundamentals of, of wealth creation now. Obviously, wealth creation is not about penny pinching. It's not about saving every penny. It's not about not living your life. Um, it, it's much more about having control of, of your finances and having control of yourself so you can accept delayed gratification. So you, you take the sacrifice now for the benefits in the long term. Um, saving is, is the first element to give you some capital to be able to then invest it and extrapolate it in the long term. So that takes us to the second segment, which is about earning more money. Yeah, it's all well and good to have a core income. Um, you need to understand that if you go down the route of employment, so you're an employee, then you know, there's, there's tax implications that come with that. And again, most people don't understand tax, so they have to get over that first hurdle. Um, but as you earn more money and as you start getting into the higher rate tax thresholds, you're going to see less and less of that money coming to you or go to the government. As an employee, you're going to pay PYE, so it essentially means that the money's taken before you even receive it. Um, you'll only know how much you earned in total and gross through your pay slip and then it'll show all the deduction that the government has taken from you. So um, your ability to negate that situation is very limited as an employee. Your ability to earn more money as an employee is also very limited insofar as if you can bring more value to that company, you can go up through the ranks and you can gradually increase your income through getting a, a better job or higher higher paid salary if you're staying still in that employment and you're just counting on the annual increases of salaries they are unlikely to keep up with inflation over the long term so staying still you will be losing ground annually your costs will continue to go up through inflation and your salary is not going to match that so you need to do more you need to be educating yourself you need to be saying how can i take the next step here whether that is in current employment, whether that is getting another job, what is the next level? Educate yourself, set goals, set targets, and understand how you're going to implement that. The more knowledge you have, the more capabilities you have to earn, whether it's through a new job, a side step, uh, you know, going up through that organization, or whether it's creating a side hustle, creating a business uh, that, that you're going to work on in nights and weekends to a point where it becomes to a scale where you can quit employment and become a full-time entrepreneur. That route is not for everybody, but the important point here is look for additional income. You're, you're usually in your 20s, not everybody's the same, but you're usually young, free, single. You have a unique opportunity in so far as you can take risks. The people in their 30s and 40s that have got houses and mortgages and families to support, they can't take that same level of risk. They have other people that they're responsible for, other people who consider that decision making. If you're young, free and single in your 20s, take the risks. Push yourself. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. This is the opportunity in your life. You have to do that. And it's very easy to spend those 20s just having fun, just kicking about with your friends, just you know, being at the nightclubs, being in the pubs, partying all the time. But it's also the opportunity in your 20s to take risks that you can't afford to take uh, throughout the rest of, of your life. So um, maximising your earning potential is, is critical. Continually learn, continually move forward, continually strive towards objectives and goals. The next section I'm going to talk about is, is tax. I, I've talked about it uh, earlier. It's a really important one for me because it's becoming increasingly difficult to build wealth, uh, particularly in the UK, because tax is such a massive burden. And the way that our tax system is set up in the UK, we, it is designed so we don't have to understand it to live. 
You know, it's not like in the US where the majority of people in most states have to file a tax return every year, so there has to be a level of understanding uh, to to disclose all their income and calculate the right taxes. And even if they have a third party organisation doing it, they still need to walk them through it and explain to them how it's correct. So we don't have any of that. We, we have a PUIE system that for huge percentage of the population takes the money before you earn it. You don't ever have to understand anything about it. Your employer deals with it. Most people don't understand anything about tax in the UK and the system is designed for exactly that because the more you understand, the more opportunities you have to minimise your tax liability. Now, as an employee, there's not going to be much you can do about that. As I said, the PUI system makes make sure of that but as a, an entrepreneur a business owner someone with a side hustle or multiple income streams then it starts to get interest and there's so many unique ways that you can structure things to minimize your tax liability in a legal perfectly acceptable way we're talking about tax avoidance here so um tax for me is is an important key element uh, and i think the sooner you get educated in tax and understand the broad principles of it. Nobody needs to be a tax expert. It's incredibly difficult to, to get to that level, but having a broad understanding of, of how it works. And I think that in turn opens a lot of people's eyes up to entrepreneurship where you can earn much higher amounts of money and pay less tax. So, you know, if, if you are a business owner uh, and you're taking 60 grand a year out of the company, there's probably ways to structure that between a marginal salary, some dividends, some expenses, some DLA payments that effectively mean you pay very little tax on that £60,000, maybe two or £3,000. Whereas if you're an employee earning £60,000 a year, you're going to pay a significant amount of tax. You know, everything over £42,000 odd is, is taxed at 40%. So, you know, you're a huge amount of your wealth is going to the, 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 the tax man and there's very lot but you can do that so um yeah uh key element number three learn learn about tax understand the fundamentals and understand the opportunities that are out there for anyone tax liability and short term is not going to get any less labor government already said they're not going to be moving that um so take it in your own hands find the ways find tax avoidance strategies look at other income streams you can earn much less money as an entrepreneur and still walk away with more net cash than a standard employee. Um, section four, um, we've already talked about this through financial literacy, but saving is incredibly important. As I said, saving and creating those saving funds should be sacrosanct. Um, my favourite strategy with that really is is the, the the Vanguard account because you know you, you can put it in automatically. It comes out there and you don't have to think about it. And uh, and over time, if you forget about it and just let it run, it can build up to a really significant pot of cash. Um, but saving is just one element. Saving is it's just the start of the journey. You know, in your twenties. You have to learn how to invest money. Uh, and whether that investment is stocks, bonds, shares, uh, tracker funds, property, watches, cars, whiskey, you know, we have literally covered so many different investment strategies on this podcast. Uh, the main principle is, you know, to find something that, that you are passionately involved with you're going to have more time in your 20s than you do in later years when you have families and obligations and, and things just get much more difficult for you in your 30s and 40s believe me um so uh take yourself that time you know if, if you've got this extra time get interested in something invest in something that you're passionate about invest in something that interests you because that will propel you to understand everything you can about that investment category it'll under it'll propel you to to understand the intricacies of investment strategies you know where best to put the money where to get the maximum return 
you know, the most successful guys I see in their twenties are investing in something that they're passionate about. Even if that's a business, starting your own business, if you're going to give it everything, if you're going to, you know, work crazy hours and invest a huge amount of time, it needs to be something that captures your interest. You know, uh, so you know, take the opportunity uh, and and start investing. Uh, even even the simplest investments can yield incredible results. Like I said, you know, the example earlier of the um, the Vanguard S and P tracker. You know, uh, S and P five hundred averaging over eleven percent in the last fifty years, year on year. That's a really good return. Uh, and all you do is stick the money in the fund and, and let it run. Um, as I say, most people that are successful in this, uh, in building long term wealth, are not doing too much trading. Trading is is almost like a, another job. It's not investing. You know, buying and selling stocks and shares all the time, constantly messing about with with your portfolio of investments. That that has to come with a lot of experience that creates a lot of transaction costs because every time you get in and out of, of, of investments there are costs associated with it. Um, so just be mindful of the difference between trading and investment. Investment you just want to park it, leave it, don't touch it, keep investing, let it grow over time and you can see the significant returns that can be made through compound it. Um, you know, property investment has been a, a big one for us You've also got pensions, uh, you know, in, in terms of investment, you get so many tax breaks on putting money into your pension and you might think, okay, well, you know, it's money I'm not going to see until I'm in my 60s or, or whatever, um, but you can get some good tax breaks. It's now there may be opportunity to access that pension for, you know, business strategy uh, investments further down the line, you know, as I said before in many other podcasts, we've used uh, SaaS strategy to allow us to use our pension to invest uh, in commercial to residential conversion projects. You need to understand the rules, it's a complex strategy, but it doesn't mean that you put money into pension and you never see it again. Most people in their 20s don't even want to know about pensions because it's just like, well, I'm going to lose this money every month that I could be spending than, you know, partying or enjoy life and not uh, I worry about, you know, what I'm going to do when I'm 60. Pensions, so many tax advantages. Usually, your, your your employer is also making an additional contribution, so you get an extra free money. Uh, and it is not the case that you can't access it to your sixty. There are a lot of strategies around how you can utilise pension funds uh, to build businesses and to scale businesses. So um, don't have a restrictive view. Start to understand um, what what pensions look like. Um, your future self will thank you for the actions that you take in your 20s. And don't get me wrong, like I understand that a lot of this stuff is really hard, you know, for anybody in their 20s to get their head screwed on, uh, you know, to, to, to be, you know, making sacrifices and, and saying, right, I'm not gonna go out partying four Saturdays a month. I'm, I'm gonna put that time and focus it on, you know, my, my future wealth creation. Um, but, you know, the sad reality is a lot of people in their 60s and 70s are, are continuing to be forced to work because they've not made those provisions uh, in earlier life and they've not made the, the right decisions. The last uh, and sixth key element of this podcast that I'm going to cover is surrounding yourself with the right people. Uh, and this can be incredibly difficult in your 20s. Um, you know, if, if you are educating yourself, if you are becoming entrepreneurial, if you are creating a, an understanding of uh, finances, if you're driven to learn more and, and increase your financial skills, uh, and you have friends around you that just want to be in the pub all the time or they just want to be out at the weekend, um, then that is going to pull you back. There's going to be times when you fold, there's going to be times when you're less focused. Um, so surrounding yourself with the right people that people are like-minded and heading on a similar journey it is also incredibly uh, important. Um, it's a lot to ask of someone who, who's, who's in their 20s, but ultimately, even when it comes to picking a partner, most of us are not at the level of maturity 
or at the level of, 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 of being a finished product as a human being within our 20s that we are in a position to be able to pick the right partner that is going to be with us for the rest of our lives and, uh, and it, uh, it is hugely, it's one of the, I've spoken about this in other podcasts, it's one of the most important decisions you make, the person that you decide to spend the rest of your life with you need to be aligned at least in your core values and certainly in your core values when it comes to money most couples won't even discuss money they still operate separate bank accounts you know it's about you know if you're going to be with someone make sure they've got the same values because you're going to spend more time with them than you do with anyone else so we talk about your, your circle of friends and making sure that's right so it's even more important that, that you you pick the right partner because if you're going to go on this journey and you know, say you want to go into entrepreneurship and they are not aligned to those values, then, you know, that's, that's it's going to hold you back or it's going to create friction or, or it's going to end the relationship in a longer term. Uh, more more uh, pressingly in your 20s is how many different people are you going to become over the next 10 or 15 years? Most people change dramatically from their 20s to their 30s. If you've not got someone who's aligned with you in terms of values, then those changes could go in different directions and you could find yourself in your 30s and 40s in a very unhappy marriage and what that could then lead to is a huge destruction and all this wealth you've done so well to create in your 20s. Divorce could be one of the biggest destruction uh, forces of, of wealth, um, both in terms of the, the loss of, of money to solicitors, but also the loss of, of, of a big percentage of your net wealth. So. Um, it's a really important one. I, I'd say that most people in their twenties, not well, everybody, but most people in their twenties are not in a position that they understand themselves well enough to be able to understand the person that should be beside them for the rest of their life. So give that some serious thought because it can be very destructive further down uh, the road. So uh, that has been my six key elements of building wealth in your 20s, um, financial literacy being at the top of it, followed by um, uh, earning, increasing your earning potential, understanding tax being number three, saving uh, being number four, obviously once you're saved you need to look at investing as number five and then finally uh, and this probably comes earlier on in the journey, even though it's the last point, is surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, your network is your net worth. The more people you surround yourself with that feed your ambition, that, that feed the things you're trying to achieve in life, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to get there. So um, that's all for me this week. Uh, this has been The Real World Podcast. I'm Alex Robertson and thanks for joining us on this wealth journey.